Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Washington State Scholastic Esports Association broadcast for League of Legends this week. I believe it's week three of competition, and as always, I am joined by Yanni on color. Thank you, everybody, for coming through for this matchup between the Commas High School Papermakers and New Tech Prep. We want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors before we get into the draft, but that draft is a coming, and it's going to be a spicy one. First and foremost, shout out to the Washington Army National Guard. Make sure to check them out at their Go Wild guard.com link and seattle Beagle pcs they're built different they are here every week helping us out making sure this broadcast runs and we are so grateful for that yanni how are you feeling today man hey you know what you already know i'm feeling a little rough i was uh i was partying this weekend at uh lcs spring finals in raleigh and then uh at a cast yesterday but we continue to truck through because the grind never stops and the grind never stops for these players but for some of these teams here the grind is just beginning so i hear that uh new tech prep they uh is it's their second year in uh wasia here but it's you know pretty much their first time doing league essentially there's a lot of really new to league of legends players on their team uh so that can create a lot of interesting strategies they have a fresh sort of newborn cult perspective on the meta <laughs> For sure. I, I love to see that. I love what new players cook up in terms of their strategies. You know, AP Renekton sometimes comes through, but other times you get people with really novel approaches to the game. And I think it's a good time to give a little bit of respect and a little bit of space to new tech prep as we've already seen Commas High School paper makers once. And so as their opponents new tech, they have a little bit of scouting that they've now done. They know that the bot lane of the paper makers is really, really strong. And we've already seen a kind of a dynamic in both of the games we cast up previously where the enemy team made up of usually newer players has to find some way to take down an ADC. And what we saw from the week after the week in which we saw the Commas High School Paper Makers, we witnessed the Heimerdinger bot versus something like a Ferris. What do you think New Tech could try to cook up here to take down one of these admittedly very, very strong teams, even though we've only seen the defeat coming out of the Paper Makers so far? And Zeri. No, seriously. Through. No, that is that is actually the extent of it. You just make sure that at the very least, obviously still very new, at the very least, you need to understand what is very strong in the bot lane, right? Generally, it's the Holy Trinity right now. It's Lucianami, it's Zyra Khan, and it's Zeri Lulu. Those are the big three. So breaking those up a little bit can make life a little bit more difficult. You're on bit of worse champions, worse combinations. And then at that point, you can just play with your what you're good at. You can kind of even out the playing field by getting those bans out. I would agree. Certainly, those are a lot of combos that you will have to ban, and that is going to give free reign for the rest of the paper makers to pick their own comfort champions. But, you know, to a certain degree, I think that the meta matters a lot more for when you're very ahead of the curve in terms of skill, in terms of rank. Um, and so with that being the case, and the fact that we're seeing such a heavy focus on the bot side from the paper makers, I imagine that when you see you know the jarvan for locking or anything like that on the general role um if it is the case that we see all of these different ad carries i still think that we're going to be seeing free reign a little bit more of a loose draft even from the rest of the paper makers alongside the entirety of new tech prep most likely and speaking of which we are about to dive on in and i'm very interested to see what's about to happen here but as it currently stands it looks like we are going to first grab a few bands off the table and I believe from the teams that we are getting new tech prep on blue side. Yeah, they, uh, that seems correct. And look, look what happened. They banned the Zeri first, nice. you know, doing their scouting. They had the extra week to kind of prepare for this, you know, spring break and everything. Are you doing really that much preparation? Are you having a good time on spring break? But they definitely worked hard on that. We're going to see the Shaco get taken away on the other side. It's a very interesting choice. You know, a lot of these times, it has to do with the fact that they probably look up these players and they go, okay, this is what some of these players really play. Obviously, there are some strategies that it's nice to ban out. I hate playing against Shaco. I think it's a good ban. I would agree. Uh, Shaco is a champion that, even though we never really see it in coordinated play, certainly can make a dent into the egos of players and also just bring the game to a grinding halt, especially if you're struggling to establish vision. And I actually think that this is a very, very smart call from the side of the paper makers because in a lot of cases, what you're trying to do when you're funneling an AD carry is keep that support around them. You don't want those two split up from one another because that is going to be prime time for a new tech to go for a five man. And so with that in mind, make sure that you aren't going to have Discord sewn into your back 
backline with champions like Pacheco or have a dive oriented pick come through like the Silas also banned away by commas. Meanwhile, new tech, they've wrapped up their bands with the Nasus and a Malphite. Yeah. And you know what? Malphite has been a champion that has been so high in popularity. Uh, originally one of the uh, bronze Zodia bands back in the day, you know, one of those, oh, you don't want to play against that. And it has crept its way back into even pro play. We saw it this weekend. Heck, if you were watching LPL this morning, you saw a pentakill for Ale. You know, I was watching that while I was working. So that's a champion that is so incredibly strong, has many, many impactful uh, ultimates throughout the game. We're going to see the Hecarim get first picked here. And this is a champion that has also been on the rise uh, a little bit more, and it's really an NA special. NA players really, really love playing this champion. I think that it speaks to the NA mindset, you know? If we're going to self-deny the Malphite, we might as well get another champion that just presses R and runs at the enemy team. I think that this is a really good pick to start your draft off. It's kind of the Elmer's glue. No pun being a horse and, you know, having a glue factory and all coming through in the background. Being a ghost horse, actually, so it's even more salient. But, uh, no, I think it's a really good choice for New Tech to open up the draft with. And Kamas is going to fire back with a very odd pick order here. If that's not Talia Bot, that's a mid laner and a support grab for the first two selections on red side yeah it is a bit of an interesting combination now it lets you go a lot of different places with your team lulu being an enchanter one of the better ones their toolkit is phenomenal so the champions you want to pair up with it you have a large bevy of picks that you can go to in response though it's going to cut a lot of those picks down you're going to see a blitz crank that is most assuredly going to be sent to the bottom lane and that is very scary because those champions that lulu works really well with I have a bit of a hard time against Blitzcrank. You get hooked and you go down. We see the Gnar that also got picked up. This is some big team fighting coming out here for New Tech. They're stacking up. They're looking for some picks. And while the Caitlyn isn't necessarily the biggest team fighter in the world, it means you have a very clearly delineated backline. And you have many different angles by which you can carry this team. If Hecarim gets fed, you're happy. If the Vagar gets fed, you're happy. If Caitlyn gets fed, you're also happy as a clam. And you have such great playmakers to pair alongside those three champions in the form of the Nar and the Blitzcrank. But let's focus back over on Kamas really quickly, Yanni, because this is a pretty wild draft from them looks like it's going to be a Nila Lulu bot side of the map. And while these two definitely have synergy, this isn't necessarily the optimal pairing between the two picks. Yeah, it's not really that great. Obviously, Nyla can get in there. If you alter as she gets in or before she gets in, should be a okay. But if she's not going in on her terms, it could be a very big problem. There's a lot of questions on where some of these members can go as well. Mordekaiser and Warwick are champions that kind of can be interchanged between the jungle, between the top lane. Uh, and both of them are very fearsome laners against the Gnar. I'm not quite sure how much work they're going to get done. But I do like a lot of what's going on here. I'm actually a huge fan of new, uh, new Tech's composition. I actually really like it. I think it's really well thought out. That has great scaling with Vagar and Caitlyn as she gets later into the game. Has a strong mm -hmm. enough early game. I think Hecarim and Caitlyn's early game are both very strong. And great ways to create a lot of chaos in team fights. The Vagar cage. Nar ultimate, Hecarim ultimate, and you even have a little bit of pick potential with the Blitzcrank as well. Yeah, New Tech actually comes through with a pretty stunning draft. I know we were talking about what kind of secret sauce they would have, what kind of naive player mentality they would have going into this, but we clearly underestimated them. They have done their homework, hopefully also with their high school homework. That would be very valuable as well, you know. League of Legends important. comes usually second, um, unless it's LCS finals, as is pretty clear. Listen, um, don't be like me, please do your homework. <laughs> We ended up in great spaces. Um, no, I, I really like this team alongside what you're saying, Yanni. Um, I am a little bit worried about the Blitzcrank. If you are hitting members left, right, and center, but you're not grabbing necessarily the best choices, there's a few kind of chaotic things that can occur. If you yoink at Warwick, I think the Warwick just presses R on one of your squishies that's like <laughs> sitting in the bush with you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mordekaiser very similarly can just kind of turn it around by immediately ulting the Blitzcrank or something hey, like thanks. that, taking the support out of the fight. Um, although, honestly, that could be a good call because then it's allowing your other four members to pop off and, hey, it isn't like Blitzcrank is a big source of damage. Out of all the champions we were talking about that's certainly not one of the ones i hope we see get fed um but yeah it comes oh hey listen time. wait you go you get fed you know <laughs> those ultimates are gonna start dishing out damage hold on you uh you might not know of what you speak you might really want to see that um but to your point yeah there's a couple of bad selections but the good news is three out of five good selections 60 percent chance of landing a good hook greater than a 50 percent chance big fan of that listen i'm a numbers guy 
you know, and you know, a bigger number, good. 60% greater than 50%. Yeah, I think there's a meatloaf song about something like that. Two out of three ain't bad or whatever. And I think that certainly is going to reflect in the way that we've seen the draft come out from New Tech. Honestly, I think they're making a statement here. And I think that this game is going to be closer than we expected. However, we have to get onto the rift. We have to see how these laning phases play out before we can make any more declarations as this casters are want to do. So with that in mind, guys, we're going to see you on the other side. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Washington State Scholastic Esports Association Week 3 of League of Legends competition. We got New Tech Prep versus the Commas High School Papermakers loading onto the Rift right now. And honestly, this has already been a shining example of the development we've been seeing throughout these weeks. Yanni, I was not expecting to see such a meta draft from a team that is supposed to be composed of new players, but they have made it work. That is a Vagar mid, and we know how much of a powerhouse that champion is. And when you are centering it alongside a heck and a Caitlyn with a Blitzcrank to pick all the while, I think that we could be getting a close game here. Yeah, I agree with that. And the best part is, the closer this game is, the stronger this Vagar is going to get with his ability to infinitely scale. As long as you're not losing the game, you are certainly going to be scaling. Looks like they did end up saying the Mordekaiser to the top lane. So everything all good there. Everybody where they're supposed to be. Not too surprised to see the Warwick in the jungle, but everybody's, some people have been playing Warwick top. And uh, it, it can certainly be a little scary. Yeah, I think that this is probably the right call at the end of the day. Most notably, Noxus on this work will be able to take the value of her CC to multiple lanes, including mid. And I think that Talia is really going to need that to set up for her WE combo, where you use your Unravel Earth and Seismic Shove in combination with one another. If you don't see that come through, occasionally this champion just fails at being able to like really facilitate team fights or do a whole lot on her own. So I like that this dynamic is what's going to come through for the pace. And even though we've been emphasizing the bot lane so much, there's certainly a whole lot about the rest of the map that I also want to keep an eye on. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this Hecarim, uh, once he hits level six, it's really on which jungler hits level six first and starts making an impact, right? The, both of these junglers do have some pretty solid ganks pre six, but they get so strong once they hit level six you have that hecarim ultimate hitting multiple members you get that warwick ultimate just uh, suppressing one target and making them have a bad day ultimately it's going to come down to which one of those two makes the move first and where it goes from there so look at these opening uh, item buys there's something to note here dirty white boy on the nar for new tech prep has decided to just go without a potion they are imminently confident in this matchup i guess it is range and there's a slight advantage for the nar on that front but this really shows that they're just kind of looking to stomp the lane and they want to accelerate their item buys as fast as possible meanwhile we're kind of seeing the opposite bot right for the paper makers w4h has just decided to go for a coal start which means that they're going to take a little while to scale up that being said they have to fight right here right now as shield wolf is going to use the rocket grab to pull in victu however the level two means that the nila lula are perfectly happy to just take that engage and get a little trade back onto the caitlin and company and you are so happy if you are the short range nyla to get this advantage over the caitlin to force them back a little bit more and i mean even taking poke from the lulu at vic Poo doing a fantastic job early but the ignite got dropped up top and that's why you need a potion. First blood going to be claimed by the paper makers at the three minute mark. And Matt, you boy, all of a sudden has a much easier time in that matchup. Yeah, that matchup turns very quickly. And look at the CS differential as well. You know, this Nara is going to have to burn that teleport if they want to catch that entire wave, which they are doing now. That is really massive. And you can take a look all across. It's a bit of a rough start here for new tech. You know, Vagar with seven. Caitlyn just getting into double digits now. And across the map, I can't really say that there's a winning lane right now. New Tech has the ability to turn this around on a dime with a really good Hecarim gank or a great grab from Shield Wolf. But as it currently stands, these lanes, they're going to have to get bullied for a little bit. I'm a little bit worried as well about Tower of Shadows going for the Dark Seal start. That isn't giving a lot of stats, and this cat is Q on the Talia. It's perfectly happy to just kind of jam waves into this champion over and over again. Look for roams, and them themselves can work kind of as a second jungler for their team. 
Yeah, if you're going to go this Dark Seal, you really need Hecarim to be able to get in, help you out, get those stacks, get that power. It's it is a bit of a surprise, you know. There are you know, the uh, Dorn's Ring is very, very good. That's why it's a big staple. You know, you get that mana back, especially on Vagar, who likes burning through mana to make sure that they can get those stacks of phenomenal evil power. Also to note, that's kind of a heartbreak in the bot side river for the Hecarim. They now know where the Ghost Horse is. And beyond that, Vikmu somehow managed to steal away the Scuttle Crab from the jungler of New Tech Prep, which means that's going to be a lot of vision given over. And now we're seeing Shield Wolf having to flash out of the fight bot side of the map. It seems to all be coming up to the paper makers for the entirety of this early game. And that is not really what you want to see. You're going to see a fight in the top lane as well. Dirty White Boy jumps in with a Mega Nar, but unfortunately, they just cannot stand up to the power of the Mordekaiser this early. And now, with that Mana Metal cresting level 6, it's going to be dicey mid-game for New Tech Prep all around. Their top lane is basically shut down. They have to try to find an angle elsewhere. But look at how much time Toaster My Love on this Hecarim has to spend bot just stopping a dive versus Icy Superb and Shield Wolf. W4H, Big Poo, all angling in alongside Noxus, and they are just putting the fight down. New Tech's in a very awkward position. Yeah, and everything, every strength that New Tech had has not gone their way. We talked about the range top lane. It's a 30 CS differential, plus a plate, plus two kills in the bottom lane. You've got the rage advantage on uh -oh. that Caitlyn that's probably going to go down here such confidence out of w4h going for the dive however it is traded back because of the tower shots unfortunately the burst wasn't quite there because of the coal but still the paper makers are pretty happy with the situation the wave is crashing in meaning that caitlin's missing a lot more than the neela is in return and overall i think that the paper makers are just going to be able to look for more aggressive engages bot side of the map and now the question is what does shield wolf do yanni because if you're a rocket grabbing in one of these champions that's now hit a big power spike off of these bots you could actually just be starting the fight in favor of the paper makers yeah that's what i was gonna bring up before that fight happened because shield wolf has pulled the has pulled the nyla has pulled the lulu vic Poo, and everything has just gone wrong every single time and now you wonder well i pulled two of the members that i'm supposed to pull and it's not oh, working man. and matt you boy is pulling members as well with his claw <laughs> and just making life very difficult oh things are going very very poorly here for a new tech uh things just not working out the paper makers have gone to town with the old tech making the papers making paper up three and a half k and respect to dirty white boy playing under the tower trying to play conservatively is just not paying off as now w4h is looking for engage not even needing to pop their ultimate they just rush down icd superb pick up the kill vic Poo drops an exhaust to just make sure that everything goes through swimmingly and our shield wolf is relegated under the tower once again yeah, and this is what happens when you don't go flash. Caitlyn opting into Ghost Exhaust. And judging by the fact that some of them are new players, I'm actually not sure if that's out of necessity or not. Um, mm -hmm. but, oh, oh? Nice hook. Great hook. Yeah, Shield Wolf going to be able to get a knockout. However, Apotheosis is used. W4H, now ulted by the Lulu, is able to survive from under the tower. Icy Superb needs to walk forward to help this Hecarim get this 2v1 underway. However, somehow the Neela manages to kite this out from the melee range. And now they're actually Oops. bullying the Ghost Horse. This cat is Q is going to come down now. Isolate these two Blue Squad members under the tower. A seismic shove lands down onto the sniper. And one more auto will kill Toaster by Love. Now a 1v three is going to continue to put pressure on new tech prep desperate for any scraps yeah that weaver's wall from this cat is q just riding that in with no problems at all and vagar just not able to keep pace in cs not able to move around like natalia is and now this lead has been cracked wide open here it's six thousand gold nyarko and I just am thrown back to the first week in which we casted Yanni because this was Kamas fighting up against a team like Lake Stevens Vikings and somehow getting ahead early, it's still throwing the game away. The thing is, they are now such a massive advantage for themselves off of this laning phase i don't know necessarily if it's going to be one pivotal fight back in favor of new tech prep that's going to decide their game in their favor at this point blue squad has to do so much in sequential plays in order to have a statement in this mid to late game listen it starts with one right exactly All you gotta get is one and then you gotta get another and then you gotta get another True. but it only starts with one right so you can't think ahead of yourselves just need to make sure that you do what you can 
to try to find a way back into this game to try to stop the bleeding because they are in a very bad way. It was a well-constructed draft, but everything else is just kind of falling apart as soon as they hit the rift. And Icy Superb at about 100 health probably can't stop this tower dive. Noxus just runs in and very belligerently uses that ultimate, dives deeper under the tower, will eventually go down because of the shots. They probably could have waited for W4H to do a little bit more there, but it, clearly the paper makers want this game over with early. Yeah, and they are putting the boot on the throat early because that's three plates already going over to W4H and Vic Poo. So much gold on these pivotal champions, right? Now, Nyla getting closer and closer to that shield boat if they want. It looks like they're going Ravenous first, but even then, that's A-OK -okay with them. You know, you're strong enough that you can Apotheosis in the middle of five people, and you're not going to die. You're not going to die. And look at how cute this pivot is. They're going to split the Blitzcrank from the Caitlyn, and now W4H, deep in enemy territory, is just going to Apotheosis down onto the fellow AD carry. Pick up a kill. It's going to be up to Toaster, my left, to try to turn this around. But unfortunately, they're just so far down in power, and Vicpu is doing such a fantastic job just shrinking and transmogrifying any amount of aggression bringing the way of Neela. So... The paper makers just once again cooking through the bot side of the map, but this time around they have all these other lanes to also answer back and make a statement. Yeah, and that mid brush play, play down on the bot lane was pretty sweet, but Hecarim with a sweet engage. Yeah, Onslaught of Shadows going to land onto W4H, but the shielding from the Lulu means that basically Neela takes no damage, and now they can put it back twofold onto these champions. Shield Wolf has to flash out yet again, and while Toaster My Love survives, they just have to go back to farming camps, and now Icy Superb is once again in a vulnerable situation. Vic Poo does get hit by the ace in the hole, but is just able to walk it off. And now the paper makers just decide to send their AD carry and company on a back. But I think this is mostly just so that they can dominate the lane even harder. This is not a concession by any means. Oh, no. They want to get even stronger. Oh, no. And Warwick looking to get in there. Couldn't quite close <laughs> out the kill on the Hecarim. But that's how you know things are going rough. Because Warwick, you'd say that they're probably the least fed member of the team. Even then, they were able to push off Toaster, my love, who has had an okay game. Yeah. I would say that right now, Toaster My Love is the one lasting hope of new tech prep, and that just comes from the fact that they're doing such a great job CSing in the jungle. Even with all these lanes getting pushed in, we haven't seen the paper makers really force too many invades in the like, which is quite valuable. It looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties uh, right now, so we will be thrown over to the Space Cam stream for just a little bit, but hopefully we'll be right back on track in a second. But Yanni, walk me through, what do you think we need to see on a new tech prep in this well, they have some Wombo combo together, right? As we head back into the game very soon. They've got Gnar, they've got Hecarim, they've got Vagar. They have a lot of zone control. The problem is they're not very strong right now, but the good news is they can fight fights where they are up one person and turn them around with their zone control. Dirty White Boy is actually kind of giving the runaround to Matt Uboy. He might actually be able to get out alive, especially with Toaster My Love here on the harass. However, nobody expects the Weaver's Wall. And now this cat is Q is going to get a double kill. I talked for so long about how this champion needed some CC to help them set up for that combo. But no, this mid laner for the paper makers is just hitting it left, right, and center. Beautiful utilization of that burst. And now New Tech Prep's Opside is completely busted open. Hook is going to land down onto W4H, but Noxus is here to follow up, making it a 2v3. And one more dive under tower means that this Caitlyn is set back in yet again. Yeah, and as you mentioned with Italia, like the old saying goes, right? If they're dead, they're controlled. You know, who needs the CC uh, when, when you're doing it that well? The thing's not looking too good for Blitzcrank. Not at all. Shield Wolf trying to hold on to that dying tower. Probably needed to back off. I'm a little bit concerned about New Tech Prep's itemization. Going for the mobility boots on the Blitzcrank early doesn't feel great when you constantly have to defend your Caitlyn and therefore you don't have the chance to roam. But now maybe it pays off a little bit more as the tier one has gone down. You're freed up on the map. But where exactly do you go? Because that was now Tower of Shadows getting obliterated at their own tier one in the mid lane. Yeah, and the gold lead has just gotten worse and worse. And Hecarim looking to just get something back. 
good job by the Hecarim to just keep themselves at relatively high health and actually move out of the way of the Talia's abilities. They will be able to hold the tier one for the time being met. You boy doesn't have the death realm up yet. And so this is going to be a fight that new tech prep can at least try to defensively take. But as soon as I say it, another unraveled earth and they are slow too far down to get out from under the Mordekaiser. Yeah. You cannot escape the Mordekaiser at this point in the game because he's so strong, right? You run away, you run into your turret. Guess what? Mordekaiser is just going to follow you. He does not care right now. He is nope. so strong. Can W4H win this 2v1? I think most likely W4H is batting for three right now. That's going to be an apotheosis to yoink back both of these champions. And Shield Wolf just has nowhere to go. That's the problem when you go for the mobility boots, right? Once you're in combat, it's not much of a movement speed buff. And so even with your abilities up, Blitzcrank can't zoom out from other champions like this Neela, who didn't even have to ghost to follow them. Yeah, and doesn't need even need to burn it, right? It's just... Now this Nyla can do whatever they want with their summoners. Just decide, you know what? We got a better fight here. Instead of this 2v1, you know, now I'm going to take a 3v1 and potentially turn that and win it. Mordekaiser uh, looks like he's in trouble here. Certainly biting off more than they can chew. And two tower shots means that's a huge shutdown and a lot of gold going over to the Nara. Might be too little too late, though, as bot side of the map. Paper makers are just assaulting the tier two tower. Another double kill. And while this isn't necessarily a 1v3, it might as well be. I don't think Biku had to do much of anything during that team fight, but they pressed their buttons and they just ensured that the Nilo was never going to go down. I feel really, really smart saying, hey, they have their summoners available to be able to take uh, like a 3v1 or a 3v2. Obviously, that one being a 3v2. Again, as you mentioned, I don't think that the wild growth was exactly needed, but I like that you just do it anyway. You don't want to give the shutdown over if you're trying to keep this lead alive. It is a very large one at this point. It's going to get even larger. Mm -hmm. and tower of shadows is playing respectfully but unfortunately because there's just no vision control for new tech prep respectfully is not respectful enough right for some yeah. reason the paper makers are still able to find a little bit of rudeness from new tech and punish them for it that impropriety going to get noxus another kill and they are now just living inside of the hecarim's jungle yeah the worst part about all of that is that because the vagar had only died once before that he was still worth a lot of gold it's 274 gold going over to the Warwick. As you, you know, accumulate more deaths, your gold gets less and less when you get killed. But that's not apotheosis. <laughs> that is a 1v3. It truly it was. is going to pay off. And so we're moving up the ladder. It's now up to W4H to go for the 1v4 and eventual 1v5. Mm -hmm. Vigna wrapped around the corner at the very end. But I think it, the Lulu is mostly there to just kind of give it light applause. Support. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Being just like, I see you, Neil. I see what you can do now. Um, This game is unfortunately over. I hope that New Tech Prep, though, they remain tenacious for the rest of the, this game's duration. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, again, their draft was really solid. Like, I really mm -hmm. liked what they had going on with their draft. It's just the execution was not quite there. It's a 20k gold lead at 16 minutes. Narco, I have to be quite honest with you. I've never seen this before. I've casted so many Maryville University games where that team just rolls over the enemy. And no, I haven't seen this either. W4H goes legendary inside of the enemy base. The baby cage oh. is the only thing stopping them from getting more kills. But the Vagar isn't there to lock up the, this cat is Q anymore. And so the Talia similarly is just able to beat the pants off of oh, everybody stop, stop. from New Tech Prep. Please, this no. is going to be an ace or at the very least. The Hecarim is relegated to the base and we are seeing a speed run here in Washington. Wasia, the paper makers are looking to take this game in 18 minutes. Yeah, Wasia speedrun any percent game victory for League of Legends. 17 and a half minutes with another wave pouring in, but a fight about to break out. And Matt U Boy is just working as a front line. Obviously, Kamas High School paper makers have pushed as far as they can go. Oh. Now it's just up to New Tech Prep to oh. try to walk forward and catch out this team. Look at this play, though. The three man no. pullback. The Talia is able to follow up beautifully on the Mordekaiser. And I think Matt U Boy is happy to donate that gold over to New Tech oh. Prep for this highlight moment. It's another kill for the Talia. And now the entirety of the base is opened up. Shelly could get another charge Dancing off on this Shelly? last nexus turret and dancing this game Shelly? is over dancing shelly
One hundred percent. I see some permas. So many other things to worry Go about. They can't auto Shelly. the champion. Oh my god! And now Vic Poo is gonna get it on the action as well, picking up a third kill for themselves. Noxus has backed. Will be able to walk all the way to the base though. Actually, it's mostly a race between uh, the minions hammering away at the oh, Nexus no, and the Shelly world's died. movement speed. No. Um, yeah, and no. at this point, paper makers are just playing with their food. They could just destroy the Nexus right now. They want to go for this last inhibitor first and try to get some more kills over onto Vanilla, though. Hey, listen, are we sure that the paper makers don't stand for making money? Oh, is this a 1v4? Oh, I think that it's at least a 2v4, although this cat is cute, unfortunately, kind of playing spoiler on the whole strength and numbers mentality thing. Uh, and it's going to be a triple kill resoundingly ending this game in favor of Thomas. Uh, I don't oh. think any of us would have predicted differently. But at the same time, Yanni, I was not expecting this game to be over in 19 minutes. The sheer dominance was insane. It was a 26k gold lead. They got 39 kills in 18, 19 minutes. I have not seen anything like that. I have not, I've not casted a game like that ever. That's not something I've seen in solo queue ever. That's not something I've ever been a part of. That's a really impressive showing here out of the paper makers. And paper makers certainly have something to prove, right? The first time that we casted them, it was for a resounding defeat versus the Vikings, who kind of played off of the hubris of this team with so many high-ranking members. This time around, though, we just didn't see that same kind of overconfidence. They played exactly within their means, and unfortunately the, for the side of New Tech Prep, the means of Commas High School paper makers was uh, a 19-minute victory uh, with very little threat ever turned back in their uh, disadvantage. Yeah, it wasn't until the game really was out of reach and they knew it that they started going for the 3v1s, the 4v2s and stuff like that. They played very tight, very respectfully. Uh and I and I applaud that because when you know, when you get that far ahead before it really spills over to that 27k lead that they had, you know, sometimes you kind of play with your food a little bit and you can give over some big shutdowns. Really good job by the paper makers to not do that. And we saw the damage charts for just a little bit. Pretty sure Nyla out damaged the entire enemy team, maybe even two times over. And it is a difficult start to the season for New Tech Prep as a whole. They are new players, though, and mostly Thawasia is here for development. And mm -hmm. I hope to cast them again, right? I want to see them up against some of these other teams that compete within this league. I think that paper makers very clearly are a standout. But because that is the case, this is not a representation of what the rest of New Tech Prep's games are going to be like whatsoever. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. And really, we're looking for growth here. You know, that's uh, that's really what we want to see. So I'm very excited for when we eventually will see them maybe a couple of weeks down the line to see how they change, they grow, and they evolve as players because at a baseline conceptual level, that composition works. Like I was very, very impressed by that. So despite the fact that it didn't really translate well over on the rifts, I'm hoping that later on in the future, we can see them build up their mechanics, build up their core gameplay and the sort of thing that comes with experience playing League of Legends. All right, well, we are here to document that journey as we are here to document the journey of many other sports within the Wasia Foundation. I'm super happy to announce that we have other games down the pipeline coming back after that spring break. I believe we have Overwatch and Super Smash Brothers up in the next few days. And while that isn't necessarily hosted by us, we are definitely along for the ride. And we hope to also see you here next week for the next session of League of Legends. But for right now, Yanni, I think it's about time for us to sign off. Shout out to our sponsors, the Washington Army now. National Guard, be sure to go check them out at GoWildGuard.com and shout out to Seattle Built PCs as well. They are certainly built different. See, Yanni's trying to angle towards that uh, icon down at the bottom there. I think we got there at the very end. Just look for the Orca and you will be able to find them. And once more, thank you everybody at Wasio for making sure that this can run. This is a great opportunity for high school players. It's a great opportunity to showcase the skills of some of these guys on into the season as well. And so I'm so happy to be here. However, for now, we must depart. See you later.